let us pray god our loving father eternal unchanging thank you for your immense love for us in jesus and thank you for the love that you have poured into our hearts through the holy spirit thank you holy spirit of god for all the fruits that you bring forth in our life that is the very character nature and the likeness of jesus christ in us and through us for the glory of the father jesus always said be perfect as your father is perfect and that is constantly progress constantly grow and teach us to grow and teach us to be perfect in the likeness of the father and the son in jesus name we pray amen, amen. we'll open our bibles to 2 peter chapter 1 read from verse 5 but also for this very reason yeah giving all diligence yeah add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge to knowledge self control and to self control perseverance to perseverance godliness yeah that's what we have been doing the last two weeks amen, amen. godliness and uh, you are persevering and uh, desiring to walk in the godliness that is god at work in us and through us we saw that the last two weeks amen and because of god working in us and through us the next thing that happens in and through our lives is brotherly kindness yeah amen brotherly kindness. kindness so brotherly kindness is an act of god at work in us and through us amen amen that we desire long and have the affection basically having affection honor for one another, another. giving preference to one another having love for one another and uh, this kindness and affection is basically giving honor and always desiring and respecting and wanting the good of others that's why the bible tells us in romans chapter 12 read verse 10 be kindly affectionate to one another amen be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love yeah in honor giving preference to one another can you see in honor giving preference to one another. one another and when is this possible that you learn to honor others you learn to give preference to others when you know who you are when you know who you are see you are rooted and grounded in jesus and your desire and your passion and your love and your want is to become like jesus then you would want to do what jesus did amen? amen giving honor giving love giving respect and always giving preference to others and that is what we were called to be and that's why in that same chapter if you see read verse 3 onwards what does paul say for i say through the grace given to me yeah to everyone who is among you yeah not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think ah that is the key amen amen Don't think of yourself very highly because when you are proud when you are arrogant when you have an attitude that I'm superior I'm better I'm so good and you know you're constantly in love with yourself then it's going to be very difficult to give honor to give respect and especially especially I would say not preference but to accept the weak as they are that's going to be very challenging see to accept the weak when you talk about honor preference yeah i can give honor and preference to those who are strong but it becomes very difficult to honor and give preference and to respect those who are weak amen amen that is where brotherly kindness comes into picture amen amen brotherly kindness comes there you see brotherly kindness is tested when we give respect and honor the weak and don't show partiality amen? amen and that is the challenge and paul says god is at work in you in philippians chapter 2 verse 13 onwards here he says offer yourself as a living sacrifice if you know in verse 1 and 2 and especially verse 2 he says don't conform to the ways of the world. world because the ways of the world is very different and the ways of god is very different for god is at work in you that's why you have the grace of god amen, amen. read read from verse 3 For I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you 
not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think yeah and why don't you think highly of yourself because the verse 2 says you have been transformed by the renewing of your mind. mind that you prove what is good acceptable and perfect in the will of god amen, amen. and in the will of god and the desire of god is that you learn to respect others honor others and give preference to others amen this is the work of god when your mind is transformed so you don't think high about your self when you have the mind of christ that's why you have to go back to philippians chapter 2 verse 5 onwards then you will understand this philippians chapter 2 verse 5 read let this mind be in you yeah because your mind is transformed and not like the ways of the world, world. so this mind is in you what kind of mind read verse 2 fulfill my joy by being like minded yeah having the same love yeah being of one accord yeah of one mind now see next verse let nothing be done through selfish ambition that's it don't be proud we saw earlier now don't be selfish, selfish. don't do things where self is in the center if jesus is in the center of all that we think all that we desire all that we want then the self learns to submit to the lordship of jesus christ and it submits to the laws and the works of the holy spirit amen amen then we can go out of ourselves why because we have the mind of christ otherwise we will be always consumed with self we will be so filled with self and that is why later on paul says in the same chapter you know jesus emptied himself jesus gave himself fully see you cannot empty yourself without being full first with christ amen amen so be filled with the mind of christ see be filled with the thoughts and the knowledge and the wisdom and the grace and the love and the progressing work of the holy spirit in us amen amen and knowing that we are called we are called what not only to witness then it will become a doing thing rather than a being thing putting on the mind of christ is to become like christ amen, amen. not doing like christ then doing will put too much of pressure on us we cannot bring out the affection and love and honor especially towards the weak brothers and sisters got me we will do it for the strong to become a witness but for the weak we'll come under pressure because the first thing that the inner heart will say this guy this person how should i love this person or why should i give preference to that person why should i talk to that stupid person why should i can you see the mind will keep on talking like this but if you have a transformed mind desiring to do the will of god and what is good and what is perfect in his sight then you know for the love of the father is the same amen, amen. so we desire that mind which jesus had in him amen amen now read see what paul says let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit yeah but in lowliness of mind yeah let each esteem others better than himself amen can you see better than himself preferring another affectionate to another honoring others giving preference to others all this is possible when your mind is transformed when your mind is in the likeness of jesus when you have the transforming work of the holy spirit deep inside your spirit and my spirit amen, amen. where we desire this see we long for this we want this in our lives every day so now when he says put on the mind of christ is we actually want the mind of christ this is the mind of christ that he was unselfish that he was always seeing the good of the father and good of the person whom he is bringing to the father amen that is why he was talking to the samaritan woman and they were all amazed that he was talking to a woman and a samaritan woman and somebody who had five or six husbands but jesus had her in mind now you're going to be introduced to your father amen amen and then he sees see the harvest is ripe lift up your eyes and see and the harvest is gathered in the kingdom of god why because jesus had the very mind of god the father so he wanted to do the will of the father he didn't conform to the ways and the times of his a jew should not mix with a samaritan no i am called for this that i have to reach out that i have to go low that i have to be a blessing that i am come for this to give life to others amen? amen so when we put on the same mind then barriers break see 
all the invisible barriers that we have made up in our mind where we are, you know, who we are. No, think lowly of yourself. See, don't be stubborn, don't be hard-hearted, don't be so insensitive, don't be so absorbed with self that you stop looking at the needs of another brother or sister around you because we are in the family of God. Amen? So when you talk about a family, so you will be affectionate, you will be loving, okay? And you won't be absorbed with yourself, but you will look out for the need of another brother or sister. Read. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, yeah. but also for the interests of others. Yeah. Let this mind be in you, yeah. which was also in Christ Jesus, yeah. that who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. But what did he do? But made himself of no reputation, yeah. taking the form of a bond servant, yeah. and coming in the likeness of men. Yeah. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient yeah. to the point of death, yeah. even the death of the cross. Then? Therefore, God also has highly exalted him. Got and it? given him... The name above every other? Name. Why? Because he emptied... See, he made himself of no reputation. We have to learn that. You may be a very reputed person in society. You may have a very good name. You may have status. You may have money. All that is okay. But when it comes to the body of Christ, we are all one. When it comes to the body of Christ, we have to learn to respect everyone. Even the weakest and the smallest and the last and the unassuming. In fact, Jesus came for them. The Bible is very clear. I have not come for the righteous, but I have come for those who are sick. I have not come for the strong, but for those who are weak. Amen? So, you know, we have to put this mind on. We have to ask the Holy Spirit to give us this grace to understand this truth that we need to be kind and loving towards one no. another. And the best example that I would really want to bring here is in the Old Testament of a man who had the heart of God. And who did the will of God in his generation. The Bible tells us. And there is a very beautiful illustration. Come with me to 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30. Where you see, you know, the Amicalites come. And they capture David's wife and children. And all of them. And they take them as captives. And something happens. Read 1 Samuel chapter 30. Verse 1. Now it happened when David and his men came to Zilgak. On the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, attacked Ziklag and burnt it with fire. Then? And had taken captive the women and those who were there, yeah. from small to great. Yeah. But they did not kill anyone, yeah. but carried them away and went their way. Yeah. So David and his men came to the city. And they found the whole city burnt and their wives, their sons, their daughters have been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voice and wept, wept until they no more had the power to weep. That means they were exhausted with weeping. Okay. But at this moment, now what you find is, please remember, all are in distress. All have the same pain. All have the same suffering. But see the attitudes. Verse 6. Read. Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him. Why? Because he was the leader. Then? Because the soul of all the people were grieved, yeah. every man for his sons and his daughters. But see now what David does. See what David does in a pressure situation like this. Read. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Amen? Amen. That is the first thing to do. He strengthened himself in the Lord. At this point of time, when all are saying, we'll stone you, you know, you are responsible, you are our leader. All our wives and all are taken captive, you are responsible. But now David strengthens himself in the Lord. And then he puts a question to God, can I pursue them? Those who have taken all my family members and everyone. Read verse 8. So David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, yeah. Pursue, yeah. for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Amen? Amen. So under pressure, he doesn't succumb to things around him, but he questions whatever he has, it makes his request known to God. God. And God says, don't worry, you'll get back everything. Now he pursues. He takes his people and he takes 600 people and he starts moving towards 
whoever has attacked and captured his family. And now along the way, 200 people become sick and tired. Read what happens, verse 10. But David pursued he and 400 men. Why? Before that verse 9, what did it say? So David went, he and his 600 men yeah. who were with him yeah. and came to Brook Bissau yeah. where those stayed who were left behind. Then, But David pursued he and 400 men ah. for 200 stayed behind who were so weary that they could not cross the Brook Bissau. <laughs> now keep that in mind. 200 are very tired. They cannot cross over. And uh, you know the Bible says David did not eat or drink for three days. Little later, read verse 12. And they gave him a piece of a cake of figs yeah. and two clusters of raisins. Hmm. So when he had eaten, his strength came back to him. Yeah. For he had eaten no bread nor drunk water for three days and three nights. Got it? He is weak. Keep that in mind. He's lost his whole family. And now he's responsible you know, for all these people around him. 400 people are saying, our families, our families, our families, our families, our families. They were planning to stone him, but he went before the Lord, okay? And he strengthened himself in God first. And now he's pursuing by the word of the Lord, go. And now there is an Egyptian who comes into the scene and the Bible tells us that this man tells him, okay, where the Amicalites are. Now, when he goes there, see what happens. Read verse 17. Then David attacked them from twilight until the evening of the next day. Yeah. Not a man of them escaped, yeah. except 400 young men who rode on camels and fled. Then. So David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, yeah. and David rescued his two wives. Now listen. And nothing of theirs was lacking, yeah. either small or great, yeah. sons or daughters, yeah. spoil or anything, yeah. which they had taken from them. Yeah. David recovered all. Yeah. Now, this is not the end of the story. You will think, okay, this is the end of the story. Wow. No, but now is the greatest challenge. Now is the time to show brotherly kindness and love. Why? As they are returning, the same 400 men who went with him, who wanted to kill him first, Another 200 are sitting there, weak, away. All the 600 wanted to kill him. But now he's coming back. See what the 400 tell him. Then David took all the flocks and herds they had driven before those other livestock and said, This is David's spoil. <laughs> Earlier they said, <laughs> Yeah, kill David. Now they're saying, Wow, this is David's spoil. He's the man responsible for this victory. But now see what David says. Now David came to the 200 men ah. who had been so weary that they could not follow David, yeah. whom they also had made to stay at the brook Bissau. Yeah. So they went out to meet David ah. and to meet the people who were with him. And what do you think you will tell these 200 people? You guys, you were weak in the battle. You stayed behind. You didn't have the strength. You didn't have the courage. You don't have the commitment. You don't have the right attitude. <laughs> David says something really beautiful. Read. And when David came near the people, he greeted them. I love that. David greeted them. And now see what he says. Then all the wicked and worthless men of those who went with David. <laughs> the Bible calls the 400 people who went and won the battle worthless and wicked. Why? Now will their worthlessness and wickedness come out and see what they say. Then all the wicked and worthless men of those who went with David answered and said, What are they saying? Because they did not go with us, huh. we will not give them any of the spoil. Can you see this? This is called selfishness. This is called selfishness. This is called, you know, preserving self. This is called not being affectionate. For this reason, worthless and wicked people. Because they were selfish, self-centered. They refused to see that another brother was weak so he couldn't come. They refused to see that another brother or sister could not walk the whole mile. But they stayed back there. They refused to generously share the spoil and the goodness and the blessings of God towards another weaker brother or sister. Brotherly kindness is tested when you are under pressure. When you are struggling, you go before the Lord and the Lord gives you a victory. But you don't forget the weak brother and sister who is back there. Amen? Amen. And you go to them and you share the spoil with them. And you tell them, blessed be the name of the Lord. It's not me, but it's God. Amen? Amen. That is brotherly kindness. This is what I say 
is brotherly kindness amen, amen. read because they did not go with us we will not give them any of the spoil that we have recovered yeah. except for every man's wife and children yeah. that they may lead them away and depart yeah get out from here take your wife take your children and get out you won't get anything you have no portion in all the spoils that we have but now see what david says but david said ha huh. my brethren you shall not do so i like that my brethren brotherly kindness he's talking to the wicked and the worthless guys <laughs> mind you my brethren you will not do so why read my brethren you shall not do so with what the lord has given us who gave us the lord has given that's exactly what i'm saying when you know god gives then you can be kind to others because god has been kind to me god has been loving to me god has been gracious to me god has been patient to me god has given of his son to me fully so i need to give of myself fully to another weak brother and sister that is brotherly kindness amen amen, amen. if you have received from god you can give to others if you have not received it's very difficult to give something that you have not received amen, amen. david received from god so he could give to another brother or sister amen? amen read my brethren you shall not do so with what the lord has given us yeah. who has preserved us and delivered into our hand the troop that came against us yeah for who will he do in this matter see i don't care what you have to say wicked and worthless guys i will not pay attention to you and your ways this would have been the ways of the world but now god is laying a standard a law yeah statutes are now of god and these are the new statutes this is the new way of god amen amen this is called brotherly love and see now what he says for who will he do in this matter but as his part is who goes down to the battle yeah so shall his part be who stays by the supplies yeah they amen? shall share alike they shall share alike that's it even if they are weak they did not come along fully to the battlefield they will still get the same share Amen? Amen. This is called equality. This is called no partiality. This is called brotherly love. This is called putting the other first. This is called giving preference to the weak. This is called going down to the lowest. This is called lifting up those who are low. This is called healing the broken hearted. This is called giving preference, affection and honor even to the last person. Amen? Amen. And now see the next statement. So it was from that day forward he made it a statute and an ordinance for israel to this day amen amen and that is how it became it became a statute statute and a ordinance. ordinance this is how we will behave god has given god has delivered god has blessed us and we will bless our brethren if that is the old testament how much more in the new we should be doing amen amen because jesus has given of himself jesus has filled us with his holy spirit and now jesus calls us to love serve and give of ourselves to one another in the family in brotherly kindness unselfish ways and giving of ourselves fully knowing that he gave of himself that we give of ourselves to others in the same way as Jesus did by the power and the work of the holy spirit may we grow in the ways of the word of god and not the world's ways amen amen may the standards may the ordinances may the law of the lord be carved on our heart that we too will be brotherly loving one another sisterly loving one another and be patient kind with the weak with the lost and with the one who has no strength at all but may we be there support and give them everything that god has given to us amen amen let's pray god our loving father we bless and thank you once again for your word we bless and thank you that your word is living alive active we pray that your word works deep down in our spirit and teaches us your ways that you have been so generous to us father so loving to us so giving towards us and you have given us of your son jesus who emptied himself for us and gave of himself fully and teaches us to do the same by the power and the work of your spirit may his love touch our hearts to be more and more like him 
towards our brothers and sisters and towards the family of God, towards the church and towards people at large. That we do the same as the Lord has done to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.